So here is a making of uh, the God Rest You Merry Gentleman that I recorded as a gypsy jazz song. And I used my iPhone running GarageBand. And that was it. Nothing else, no other mics, no cables, no nothing. Just that. So in order to get myself in the, in the spirit of it, I thought I would capture some record crackle. Now we've got this old Django Reinhardt 10 inch record from the late 1950s just a compilation of some of his recordings of just after the second world war and this record is scratched to hell now that sounds good for me because what i can do is simply to record some crackle from this record straight onto garage band straight onto one of the tracks which means that i can then loop that crackle and have something that goes underneath my record so i've got something like this I mean, that's fairly terrible. It only just plays. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I will uh, just direct you down to the desk now so you can see the workings. So you can see on my main camera on GarageBand, you can see the essentially the working space that I've got here. Now, what I've got at the top is the crackle that I recorded. So I'm just gonna unmute that and solo it so you can hear the crackle on its own. Now what I did was I recorded the crackle and then I edited out to reveal just the crackle so no sort of tunes or chords or any sort of louder pops and clicks and then I recorded enough of that to create a little loop so that was my first job second job was to actually get started recording itself now all of the instruments that you can see on the video they were all just sat here recording straight onto the mic of uh, of the iPhone here so the first job was guitar So that joint was the counting because there's no click here. I just recorded this free and I used um, like a, a little sort of crib sheet here of uh, just a bit of treble clef and some chords. And that was my sort of arrangement that I read everything from. So that first guitar, I think you'll agree that's a pretty damn good acoustic guitar sound i mean the guitar itself is a 1960 hofner president so you know this is definitely post sort of gypsy jazz but it's got the flat wound strings on it which just give it that sort of grunt that you would have had from one of those original acoustic guitars now the second track that i recorded was another guitar. So I've got two guitars playing together. At the beginning, I had to sort of go with the first one and do some sort of free stuff because there's no click. So if I just go to the beginning of the tune. So there's kind of call and response with that sort of tremolo sound. And there are my two guitar parts. Next up was the bass. Now I used my shovel, um, my double bass, my sort of shovel uh, equivalent. Um, and I plugged it straight into the speaker over here, straight into one of these monitors. And then the monitor um, was recorded by, you know, the phone. So I've got this. <laughs> That will do me absolutely fine. If I put the three together. I've got something, you know, resembling a rhythm section. So this, the next track that I recorded. Was 
was the violin part. Now, all of the recordings that I made, I used this pair of headphones with my audio interface here. I used the audio interface as like a headphone amp uh, rather than using the phone because the only pair of headphones I had were quite short. So I had to have a longer pair of headphones which only had this uh, large jack plug on. So I used use those instead but essentially the computer the computer at the moment you can see it's on and running that is simply recording this presentation it's not doing any of the mixing or any of the audio of the actual tune everything is on the iphone so then i had a solo guitar track where i just put little sort of counter lines in addition to the tune and then I had an accordion. Now, that is, represents the sum total of the tracks I recorded. So I've got six tracks in all. Two guitars, a bass, a violin, solo guitar, and accordion. And that's it. So, of course, we are dealing with a mono recording originally. You know, some of those, um, well, all of the Django Reinhardt recordings, in fact, were in mono. Um, so I don't want any stereo contingent, no reverbs, no effects, no nothing. The only effect I might apply is a little bit of compression. Now, if I just go back to the first guitar track. Now, I could make that sound a little bit harder. If I go into the track controls, I could go into plugins and EQ. I could have a go at boosting the mid range a little bit and the top end right down. So I get more of a sort of driving sort of gypsy jazz rhythm, but I'm not going to do it here because I'm going to show you how I got that sound, that sort of muddy, sort of slightly distorted sound. So assuming we're happy with our mix, which I think I am, just go back and uh, have a listen through to it. Um... Yeah, that'll do me fine. So you can obviously take care with your mix and you can automate things as well, which I'm going to show you about in a minute. So if I just double click on one of these tracks, sorry, that's it, click and leave. I'm going to click the merge button, which will then allow me to select all the tracks that I want to mix down into some sort of file that I can treat. So I'm going to go merge and then it'll do its thing and it'll also normalize the track it'll make it as loud as possible so we've now got one file so if i just play that uh, file minus that record crackle at the top okay there's my tune so i'm going to uh just while i'm here I'm going to cut and paste that record crackle. Now, if I just draw a box around the bits that I want, there we go. You can see it's a loop, but it's long enough not to be, you know, one of the, like a, a cartoon where you see the same background going past uh, again and again and again. Hopefully it can be not one of those. So I'm going to paste that. Uh, it doesn't matter if you paste slightly over the top of the previous um, record crackle because we don't want there to be any um, any gaps um, between uh, the you know in, in the crackle itself and I think that's the end of the tune yes it is okay so if I just play that back now my track is sounding far too clean for that record crackle it does the two don't match so I'm going to go to be my tune. In fact, I'll keep the record crackle in actually so that I can tweak the sound according to that crackle. So I'm going to go into track settings, or track controls, and I'm going to go into plugins and EQ and I'm going to select a compressor and then I'm also going to have a distortion. Now, I want the compressor to make everything sound a little bit more sort of 
a little bit punchier. So I need the mix here to be 100% because that means you are listening to just the compressor. And then the gain I'm going to take down ever so slightly and I'll explain why in a second. <laughs> So that's already sounding a bit better. If I go down to the distortion control now, it allows me to set the tone. Now that means that I'm cutting everything above about a thousand hertz at the moment, which is a bit draconian for a gramophone record. But if I vary the slider, you can hear basically how that will change. <laughs> Okay, it's getting there. So the drive, the distortion drive, just makes it sound a little bit fizzy. That's too much, so I'm gonna take it down a little bit and the output up. Okay, I need lastly my visual EQ to strip off the very bottom end bass because you didn't really get that on a gramophone record. The bass was quite rich, but it wasn't really, really sort of pronounced right at the bottom there. You know, we're never going to be able to recreate a 78 RPM record, but you can have a bit of fun trying. So the crackle at the moment for me is not really reflecting what's going on in the tune, partly because the treble is a little bit missing from that crackle because there are elements of treble in the recording itself that are making that crackle sound a little bit misplaced. <laughs> a little bit better. Now, when we get to the end of this track, we've got to mute the crackle, but in such a way that it sounds like it's been, you know, transferred and put on a CD or something. So if I just go right to the very end of the tune, there it is, there we go. I want to mute I want to fade that crackle out. So if I just single click on there, it will give me some options. Oh should do anyway if I press that arrow. There we go. Automation, that's what we want. So there's a pencil tool at the top which allows you then to draw a fade. I might switch the pencil off again and then I can drag the, the fade up and down and then um, fade it to a particular level, in this case, infinity. That will do me absolutely fine. So also I need to set the song length now. Now I want 65 bars because when I send this to iTunes or send it as a song I don't want it to go on forever so my section A at the moment it says 71 bars I'm going to go 65 and what it will do is it'll chop that the audio off so that it will finish at exactly 65 bars There we go. That means that we've now got something that ends with that four second gap before the next thing on your iTunes. OK, so I've done that. I'm ready to export this. So I go to my arrow at the top, my songs, and it's called it my song nine copy three. Mm, catchy. I would rename it if you can. Um, God rest ye manouche. Those of you who don't know about Manouche Gypsy Jazz, do a bit of research because there's some fantastic playing out there, all the sort of Django Reinhardt and all his associates and, and uh, seeing how the music evolved, it's really interesting. So I'm going to now click and hold that and then I'm going to go to share. 
and then you can edit that you can save this as a song or ringtone or you can even send the project for somebody to play over the top or a ringtone but I'm going to save it as a song and I'm going to keep it uncompressed you can do all the compression and making mp3s within iTunes on your computer uh, so it's definitely worth keeping it uncompressed if you can so that is now going to allow me a whole host of options. I can send it anywhere I want. So I'm not going to do that because actually I recorded the output of this phone onto computer in order to create the video that I made. So I didn't send it anywhere. But you can do that. You can send it to SoundCloud and you just log in and up it goes. So there is a demo of a bit of Gypsy Jazz on an iPhone.